<laughs> Hello and welcome to the November 8th, 2023 Select Board meeting. The entire board is present along with the town manager, the town clerk, members of other town governments is also present, Maine Water. Um, let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We have our approval of the meeting minutes from October 18th. 17th. It says 18th on there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. The meeting minutes from October 17th. The agenda is wrong. The minutes are correct. <laughs> Maybe. Let me check. I'm not myself tonight. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes uh, pending the correct date on the top. 17. Okay. <laughs> <Second motion. laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. First public comment. Does anybody have anything to say on, on non agenda items? Coolio. We will close the first public comment. Um, we have no public hearings. Reports of committee, the community garden. Please. I'm Rita Cushrell, 8A Goodwin Street. First of all, I want to thank you all for your support. We would not be as far along as we are now if you hadn't given us your unanimous support. So I just want to reiterate to you how much uh, I am appreciative for, for that. Uh, first thing is that uh, we did get the SMPDC grant for $25,000, which is going to go a long way to doing the infrastructure that come next spring. We have been um, having two monthly public meetings, which has given us a lot of input from the community, and that's been really very helpful to us. Um, last week, Dennis and I finished the conditional use and site review application and presented that uh, last week and just found out this afternoon that we'll be on the agenda for the 16th. So, fingers crossed. Um, we had a meeting with Jeremy and James a few weeks back, maybe, I don't know, it might have even been six weeks back, and they encouraged us to look at forming a nonprofit. So we are going through that process now. We've already established a wonderful board. So we have five voting members and three, at least three non-voting advisors. And they've been extremely helpful. I'm really appreciative for that. Uh, and I'm in the process of filling out the paperwork, which is a bit daunting, but uh, the paperwork for the nonprofit. So uh, one of the things I would like to ask you tonight is if the town would be willing to pay for the various fees that go with creating the nonprofit. How much is uh, actually involved? About seven hundred dollars. Hmm. Where would we have money in the budget to do something like that? I can. Do a little research and come up with a proposed. Okay. Can we use the open, the open grounds fee, the, the um, open space? Yeah, there we go. The open space, the open space fees. That was a question that came up during open space planning whether that could be used for maintenance or programming, and that's something I can. It's actually part of my homework I need to do anyways. So. Okay. Do we have a specific policy that covers that? Because if you, I mean, I think. Um, in support of the program, but if we do it, then and some the next group steps up. <clears throat> is there something that covers how it dictates how we? Well, this is kind of a, a one of the unique situation because this is something that you know came through before we, you know, after we did the budget process. So there's nothing in this year's budget to promote this. Right. That's why you know some some of the monies we were talking about using was from the uh, TIF money, you know, using some of that, because that can be used on greenways and walks and things like that. So we can look at using some of that money for things like that. 
And this um, would fit under that category? Uh, well, I sort of think we have to figure out you yeah. know, where, you know, that's why we have to figure out where we might be able to have that money in a budget that you know, was available to us. So it, okay. I'd, say, I'd say it's not, not unhopeful. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Just wanted to put it out there as a request. Yeah, yeah and, and I don't have, like I, like I said, I'm very supportive of it as well. I'm just concerned that someone else comes in and says we'd like to form a nonprofit and we want the town to pay for the nonprofit fees. Where do we? We got to have some sort of parameters. And if it fits into the green space thing, then great, that's our answer. But we should have something as a guidance because if you decline someone else later, yeah. you have more ground. I hope you don't. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no. so well, well, it, it no. is you know. Is this again is something that has come through the process through the town so it's all things that um, the town is already accepting and looking to to fund and things so is I would think that in the future any other you know entity that we're doing it would have to go through a similar process and you know same as what they did come before us you know originally right. to get the backing and everything so now they have the unofficial you know okay from the town to pursue these things you know so right yeah. and I and I, and I yeah. agree with that I like I said yeah. I'm in support of it I think it's great and I support a nonprofit uh, that's going to help you I just want to be so, careful so, that you're somebody else. Else. so you're volunteering to write the policy <laughs> <laughs> or I'm really doing that for another one I'm just saying is I don't you know yeah, right, we have right, to have some right. we have to have some parameters yep. around it yep. if, and if, in the green space thing with this as the garden if that qualifies and that's our answer you know I just think we should have some boundaries because what if someone else says hey I'm going to go to the town I think this is great but now the fees are a thousand dollars Agree. We have to have some sort of parameter to say, you know, that yep. for that. that that's all I'm saying because I, yeah. I, I definitely do agree with you. And I think I, that it does fit within the green space. We went through the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. and looked at the things that the the community garden is is going to do, and the the. Um, goals within the, the comprehensive plan. There were 14 yep. different areas that, that actually intersected. So I think that it, it probably does. But I, I agree with you. I think there does need to All be right. something so in place. In the, it, are you able to use yep. the grant money in the meantime? That's or is that, is that um, specific or something else? We need to ask Mr. James about that. Um, I don't know if it was specifically enumerated. We didn't have it in the budget. Did you have it, maybe you had a miscellaneous expense or something? Yeah, but it was nowhere near that amount. You might be so. able to pivot and be able to, I mean, it would just be a email and letter to the Community Resilience Program to see if that would be an eligible okay. expense. I'm, I, I'd be surprised if they wouldn't allow us to pivot a little bit of the funding yeah. if, we, if we had to pull yeah. some. I mean, and if you did have okay. to do that and there was a shortage of funding, then when the budget process comes back around, mm -hmm. we can actually put some funding aside for the community garden specifically you know whether that's thousand five thousand some you know okay. something just just something that you can pull from when you need something you know great, great. Um, so that that's also a possibility as well great okay thank you and just along those lines I wanted to mention that um, I have submitted three more grant proposals um, and they're ones that that don't necessarily need to have a nonprofit status, which is good. And then we're doing a crowdfunding campaign starting the 15th of November, so from November 15th to December 15th. And it's through Seed Money Organization, which is a main, a main nonprofit that helps nonprofits get started. And every year they can do this crowdfunding, which is great. They let you use their platform and all of the tools that they have. You, you just have to set a, a goal and then meet that goal. And once you meet that goal, then you get put into a some sort of a lottery for other grants, mm. which could be up to like $15,000. So so there may be money coming in that could, could help with that. And the other thing I just wanted to mention is that um, we've had a lot of really wonderful in-kind donations already from the community. So the community is really stepping up and showing their support. I was going to ask, what, how many people have been coming to your meetings? Um, the first meeting, I think we had, I think it was 11 people. 
And we have not had that many since the first meeting. But but in the first meeting, we got a tremendous amount of information. Mm -hmm. And then, then it kind of came down to about a core of maybe six or seven people, mm -hmm. which is really good. Yeah. Well, and especially for this time of year. So. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say, you'll yeah. probably see an uptick as it gets closer to spring yeah, and people start thinking about it's it. It's been very, very uh, busy summer. <clears throat> so that's it. Any questions? No, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Thank really you. really appreciate Thank it. You. Uh, all right. Um, so I know we have Jeremy and Marie here. You have to wait till the, the end because you're not quite on the agenda in the right place. So we'll get to you. Um, presentation Maine Water Company. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. And uh, just, just a reminder we've been asked, and it's written in our contract, that we meet with the select board. Uh, two times a year, uh, we're, but we're, with that being said, we're always happy to, to, to come more than two times a year. Uh, it was about a year ago that, that we came before the select board and started to talk about who Maine Water is and, and what we do, and, and I, I told James on the phone today, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with the town. We really enjoyed it, a great community to work with. Um, every, every water system is a little different, a little interesting, um, and we've been really pleased to bring in two operators from, a, from another water district and, and make the Maine Water employees. To, to run the program here, and, and, and that starts with Joe Dignam. The last time I was here, I talked about all the great things that Joe did, especially in an emergency fashion, and th this is Joe, for those who haven't met him. He's a very experienced a surface water uh, plant operator. He's also supporting us up in Biddeford as well, so we're really happy to have him. Um, and we also have John Jacobs, who's our new lead operator down here in Berwick. Um, also came from, from York Water District. Um, very experienced in surface water. Um, has really hit the ground running, working in the community, and uh, and really glad to have him here as well. Um, Mickey Hall, our superintendent, Bitterford Sacco, he can continues to bring a, a daily support as well. And then indirectly, our other 80 employees also do, in, even if it's in, in small ways. Um, so I, I did provide each of you an, an, an operations report. We'll try to provide those every time that, that we meet with you to give you an update on your water system and, and where things stand and the, and the work taking place. Uh, to start with the customer service and billing update, um, it, an important thing to note there is the, uh, your rate increase um, that was approved in 2022 um, and per the tariff was fully implemented um, in, in, uh, fully in September of this year. Uh, those bills have gone out and we've gotten very little feedback or very little uh, amount of calls related to that. That usually points to good communication, um, com which, which you've done, letting your community know why it's coming and that it is coming. Uh, as we get the calls or concerns, we, we will share those with you, but, but so far n not a lot because I, I, I think it truly made sense for the community. Um, the other piece is we are exploring um, we, with um, with our team, last year, if you remember, we talked about normally in our contracts, we'll also run the financial function, which is the budgeting, the monthly reporting, um, the accounts payable, accounts receivable, that, that financial function we typically take on. We didn't include it in the contract. We didn't include it in the number, uh, the cost of the contract, because we didn't feel totally comfortable that with our transitions and finance we were ready to do that. We built out the team. Our team is, is really in a good place right now. Um, and so we're, we're exploring what it would take to get there, how long it would take to get there for Berwick, what the start date would look like, and then what the cost is so we could, so we could share that with you for consideration if it, if it makes sense for the town. So more to come on that in the next few months. Um, and then I will turn it over to Joe since he's really the, the hands-on person in the water system and he'll give an update of the work that's going on in your water system. Thanks, Michael. Um, I don't remember if I've had a chance to meet many of you, uh, but my name is Joe Dignam and I've been the operator here since Maine Water took over in March. So I've, I've been the guy here running the system um, all summer long. We recently, as Mike said, we took on um, John Jacobs, and he's been with us for a few months now, and he's been doing a fantastic job taking over the day-to-day -day operations here in Berwick. Um, and I'm moving to more of a high-level role in Berwick, um, 
while John's doing the day-to-day -day operations here. And, uh, you know, I, I personally think that we've made great strides so far with this water system in the short amount of time that we've been here. Um, you know, I've kind of broken down the operations, updated the distribution system and the treatment plant um, to kind of separate out some of the things that we've done. Um, you know, back in March when we took over, uh, we came into it with several fire hydrants that were out of service, um, full of water, frozen, broken, what have you. Um, we worked with the fire department to identify those and come up with priorities to, to repair, which we did. Um, as of now, every fire hydrant in town is operational. Uh, we were able to fix all of them actually without having to dig up and replace any, which was a big thing for us. Um, I thought we were going to have to replace probably 10 or 12 of them going into it, but we were able to repair all of them above ground. Um, on top of that, we've painted about a quarter of them. You might notice some of them had fresh paint this year. Um, we'll keep working on that as we get back into you know warmer weather. We'll keep renewing and repainting those, keep them looking fresh. Uh, we increased probably about our water quality monitoring in the system by about four times of what was being done before from what we could tell. So we're doing about four times as much water quality monitoring in the system to keep track of the trending of the water quality as it moves through the system so we know we were able to identify problem areas in town, certain areas need flushing or uh, you might have to go out there and run a hydrant for a little while just to keep things fresh. Um, you know, there's like uh, areas in the town like down by the uh, Berwick Iron, that's a big dead end, you know, the, the, that area just kind of stagnates after a while. So we've been down there regularly flushing, you'll see us out, out there. Um, the entire system, we're in the process of flushing right now for the, the first time since we've, we've taken over. We'll try to do it twice a year if we can until everything is completely clean, but once a year, definitely we'll get the whole system flushed. Um, we're working on renewing a unidirectional flushing plan um, so we'll be able to really scour the water mains as they should be. Um, we've been through a few billing cycles so far, and through that, we've identified several issues with either customer water meters not working, their reading equipment not working, or their uh, just their meter reads have been off for however long. So we've we've resolved dozens of issues, either replacing meters, replacing you know, wires or equipment so we can get accurate reads for everybody. Um, you know, and I, I think the reception with, with uh, the people that we've been in contact with has been really positive. You know, we're extremely responsive. We get there within a couple of days and we fix their problem and we can get make sure they're getting billed accurately and they're getting the right service. Um, so over the summer, obviously, we have the edge development going on out here. Um, we've spent a significant amount of time out there. I, just, it's, I think it's important to mention that uh, all the water infrastructure for this year has been installed over there. We've spent a significant amount of time inspecting uh, the installations and uh, we've worked with the contractors. We've built a, a great relationship with the Great Falls over there. They are uh, now familiar with our specifications, um, our installation requirements, materials, and everything. So they've, they've been great to work with, and we've, we're there. Anytime water's getting put in the ground, we're, we're on site to, to oversee that. Um, we've also spent a lot of time over at Blackberry Hill. Uh, that development off of, uh, you know, across from the uh, Pussy School there, they're, they're putting in houses over there like crazy. You know, there's a couple of them every two or three every month we're installing meters. And, uh, we've inspected uh, a good amount of the main work over there. A lot of it was done beforehand, but um, the contractor over there, um, I, I personally had a, had a good working relationship with before I came to Maine Water, so I know that they, they did um, everything properly beforehand. So uh, on the distribution side, you know, we made great progress. So um, I feel really good about that. Um, at our treatment plant, you know, we had Coming into it in March, we had some some pretty significant issues. We had to, you know, we worked right through the night, several days in a row, just trying to keep the place running. You know, um, we ended up having to physically excavate 
the filters um, with shovels and buckets and clean everything out. And uh, once that was done, we, were, we saw you know, a great improvement in the plant. So from there, we've been able to keep it running well with proper maintenance, <clears throat> backwashing techniques. Um, and we've used um, some uh, operational insight from Wright Pierce and they they gave us some suggestions on uh, chemical washing and some other um, strategies to be able to make, keep a handle on the manganese. Luckily this year the river stayed high. We didn't we had a lot of rain, so we didn't have to deal with any low water in the river. So uh, I don't know how that will would affect our operations, but you know we've we have a big team that um, if it were to happen next year, say I feel confident that we can. We have the strategies in place to be able to get through that. Um, so we've added several uh, pieces of monitoring equipment in the plant. We're still adding equipment now that will help bring the plant. It's not only into compliance, but it'll allow us to monitor all required water quality parameters, um, even when we're not there. Everything will be continuously monitored. Um, so anytime the plant's running, we'll be able to go back and see exactly what was happening um, at any given time. Um, we've added several tests to our daily lab work at the plant. You know, we've we've really made a robust uh, water quality testing regime daily. Every day we're at the plant, and we have you know we're running tests from the raw water all the way through the process into the finished water and we're tracking that um, and we're making adjustments throughout the day as needed to make sure the water quality is um, optimal. And uh, the last thing I want to mention about the treatment plant is we're about, we're very close to uh, being automated as we call it in the business and basically what that means is the plant will run itself even when we're not there. It will start and stop as needed. It will record all water quality parameters that are needed. The pumps will dose, you know, they'll, they'll change their dosages based on the water quality parameters that the, the analyzers are reading. Um, and we're about, I would say about two weeks away from, from being fully automated. So whether we're here or not, the plant will be running uh, as it should. And part of that is making sure all of the analyzers are maintained, calibrated properly, um, and we have regular checks, which happen daily while we're here. So um, I think we've made great progress and we're continuing to move forward um, you know, week by week here. So I'll, uh, I think I'll let Mike talk about some uh, the uh, recent bid um, project, the capital upgrades, and uh, you know some plans for the future. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Uh, so it to uh, to talk about the, the future improvements for the plant, the, the last time that we were here, Dan Flagg from Wright Pierce was here, who's, who's, who's helping us with the, with the future of the plant to, to build some resiliency when the raw water quality changes. Um, and, and we had identified after our last emergency um, in the winter time and in March that, that we really had some short-term improvements that we needed to make much sooner rather than later uh, to keep the plant running. And so, uh, as Dan Flagg at Wright Pierce had shared with you l last time, we were gonna prepare to, to take those items, get them to the drinking water program, I identify a scope of work, and then, and then get it out to bid. And, and, and we've done that. And so, uh, Apex Construction from Summersworth um, was the low bidder of the project, um, and for a cost of $448,000, that would be covered by the SRF um, money. And um, we would like to move on that pretty, pretty quickly. The, the the sooner that we can get that signed and get ready to move on that, we'd be able to order the equipment with with any type of water treatment equipment. Just like any anything electronic, right now it takes a long time to get. So the sooner that we can get going, the better. And then there's the which there's the the long term strategy um, to prevent happen from. We'll, what's happened here summer after summer in the dry the dry conditions with the exception of this very wet summer uh, as you know Wright Pierce has has taken a close look at the right pretreatment strategy um, and so we're working with them right now to figure out what is 
we've got data coming in, we've got scope considerations, we've got cost considerations. And for what does the borough facility really need? We want to focus on uh, what are the needs, what are the wants, because you know the cost matters. Um, and then also to take some time in that discussion to, to explore what are our options with renewing an interconnection with, with uh, Summersworth that used to exist. Um, what, what capabilities do they have to send water our way, how much, um, and, and to do a, kind of a, a, whole, a holistic look at what's the best way to get water from somewhere else. I think the Summersworth connection is worth exploring because it wouldn't only bring you some water during those poor raw water quality experiences, but also redundancy in any, any type of plant emergency. If your plant goes down, um, and I'll give an example of that. In, in Biddeford Saka, we have an interconnection with a neighboring water district, and it works out really well for both of us. We run into an issue, we can send water to, to each other, and it, it, it's helped us in some jams. So we want to spend some time on that to get that right and then get a, some real options and recommendations in front of the select board so we can make a real informed decision about what you need, what you might want, and then also considering what the cost is to water repairs. So we'll spend some time on that and we'll, we'll keep it in the loop. Um, like I said, as you can see, it's been a joy having Joe here. Um, and I, I do want to take some time, if anybody has any questions about the water system, about where we're headed, on, on what we're doing, Please ask now, and of course, we can reach out anytime. Um, the uh, the bid for upgrades and stuff like that. Um, my um, only real concern is is that do we have enough money to cover that and the already planned upgrades? Well, we we don't we we don't have the cost nailed down for the for for the pre-treatment upgrade. So, and James, you, you might be able to help us a little bit on, on, the, the, on the SRF money. We, we have enough, obviously, to cover the 484. Yes. Um, but finding out what, what things cost in 2023's market, yeah. um, and, and based on the pre-treatments to study what the scope would actually look like, we've got to nail that down before I can answer that question. That's what we're working on right now. Okay. Um, I mean, if, if it's something that we need, obviously we'd be interested. We just need to see a more detailed bid and more detailed information about what we need to get. Absolutely. So um, if that's something that you need sooner rather than later, then it's something that we need to see pretty soon as well so we can actually start looking at it, you know. Because right now that's just, you know, a number on a page and we don't know what we're getting, so... Um, that's what we would need to, to move forward with something like that. We need more detailed information. Um, yeah, I, 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 I totally understand. I, I think what we would look to do is to come forward with a real defined scope of work, mm -hmm. show you what the different considerations were, and probably begin to do some analysis too between a full pretreatment compared to a full, you know, to if we find that there's a real possibility to have an interconnection, it's, it's something you want to consider. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? I, I don't have a question. I, it's common, you know, as I've been dealing with this water issue going on for close to 10 years now. And um, I have to say it's a real pleasure to work with professionals. As you know, the, the, the uh, quality that we had before is I, I, I never understood why somebody whose job was to make good drinking water did not do everything in their power to provide good drinking water to the town and uh, like I said it's a, it's a real pleasure to work with professionals that seem to know what they're doing and looking to get the best water quality we can thank you very much yeah and I think the <clears throat> same thing is when you originally took over we kind of thought we would get some feedback from people about, oh why did you outsource why'd you do this and so far especially over the summer as you guys have been out, your trucks have been around, people have noticed them. I, the only thing personally I have, I don't know about anybody else, but um, I've just heard po positive comments. That's it so far, because you always wonder, oh, here it comes, but it's been nothing but positive comments, so uh, people are noticing. Well, yeah, I was going to say positive comments and very little comments, which yes. you, usually <laughs> that's, I mean, silence means it's running well, you know, yeah, and that's, yeah. um, 
I think James, you know, I brought up a James back in August. I go, last August it was, everything was water this and water that. Yeah. So, you know, we didn't hear a thing this year about it. So well, good to hear. We, we, we appreciate that. <laughs> Big difference in the rain we should get that, yeah, yeah, last but, August and this know. August. Because you, you had the curiosity when the truck was driving around in the beginning. Who is there? What's going on that? And you explain to them and you think, okay, what's now <laughs> what's, what, the comments are going to come. But they didn't. A few people, a few contractors in town said the same thing. They've had nothing but positive feedback so that, I, that I've gotten so far. And I'm so surprised to hear how many fire hydrants that we had that were not operable. Yeah. Yeah, there, that yeah, was, there were several. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that obviously was a priority. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, yeah. They, they mentioned back in March that they were going to have to replace, mm -hmm. you know, a dozen or so. Um, but I'm glad to hear that they were all yeah. prepared, <laughs> uh, you know. Cost-wise, that's much better. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Now, it, it, it takes a pretty. It takes a proactive, you know, inspection program too. You you got to test them out, make mm -hmm. sure they work. So, yeah. And in terms of the the painting them and everything, it just just brought me back to when I was a kid. And there was a kid. His whole eagle project was just painting painting fire hydrants in the town. Like that was what they did. It's a great project. Yeah. It's yeah. Great, yeah. So. You know, reach out to the Boy Scouts, see if they got anybody who's looking for them to do. That's a know? good idea. <laughs> so, I like it. Um, thank you. Yeah, anything yeah, else? Thank you very much for that. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yes. it. Appreciate thank you time. for the very detailed report. We appreciate it. And, you know. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Good night. All right. Uh, no unfinished business town manager report. Playground is being installed this week. Um, there's some pictures on the Town of Burr Facebook page or stop by take a look. It's coming together very nicely. Um, we have a bunch of volunteer opportunities. Uh, you heard earlier with the community garden. Uh, we had a great meeting for open space planning. So that's about preserving a lot of ways going out and acquiring property, partnering with land trust to keep what makes Berwick Berwick. Um, so there's that. The comprehensive plan meets tomorrow. Vision Berwick is always looking for um, volunteers. So if you're interested, uh, shoot me an email at townmanager.berwickmain.org and I can help point you in the right direction. Just want to acknowledge um, Patty and their crew for another extremely well-run election. Um, huge asset to the community. Also, uh, I think it's been a while. It, uh, Trunk and Treat was awesome. Trunk and Treat, um, another great job at recreation. Um, yeah, looking forward to the holiday parade coming up. Uh, I think the tree lighting's the second and the parade's the third, or maybe the first and second. First and second. First and second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I have, uh, the Outfall 7 slash Great Falls Park project will be going out to bid soon. So that's the uh, Mullen Street project and the establishment of Great Falls Park. Uh, James, isn't there a uh, veterans uh, program this weekend as well? There is uh, Veterans Day Saturday. Saturday, and don't they have a? They they, have a they have a ceremony at the Memorial Park at eleven o'clock. Thank you. And auditorium if yeah, if it, yeah, uh, it's supposed to be good weather. Just cold. <laughs> that completes my report. Any questions for James? All right. With no select board communications, approval of accounts payable. We have payroll warrant number 26 from October 26, 2023, in the amount of $78,047.43. <coughs> Payroll warrant number 27 from November 2nd, 2023, amount of $77,223.11. Pay accounts payable warrant number 28 from October 31st, 2023, in the amount of $232,312.81. Well, yeah, still got my order. Payroll warrant number 29 from November 9th, 2023, in the amount of $78,448.83. And, oh, yeah. And accounts payable warrant number 30 from 
November twenty November eighth, twenty twenty three, in the amount of one million one hundred nine thousand eight hundred thirty seven dollars and forty one cents. I make a motion that we pay the bills. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? The town keeps trucking for another two weeks. That's not direction. I know. I'm starting to think. We have the personnel policy under new po new business, but we're going to table that for another meeting, and hopefully get to that next time. <laughs> November seventh, twenty twenty three, election results. Patty. Yes, we have results. Um, so the town. <laughs> so everything passed. I won't go into the nitty gritty. Total votes was 1,705. The state, um, some things passed here, some didn't. Statewide, I don't have the numbers, so I don't know what passed, what didn't. But anyways, the Berwick results are on the website. Total votes cast for state was 1,706. The discrepancy of one is because one absentee ballot did not include the town ballot. So all state reports were filed today. We're working on absentees and putting in new registrations. A um, couple more weeks of work, and we'll wrap this one up and get geared up for March. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I don't um, imagine to be much on the ballot in March. Is, is that of the total votes? Uh, how many? Yeah. Were, how many were absentee uh, early voting? Do you? Can you ask me next meeting? No. No. Uh, absentees. Uh, I don't need exact, but, you know, with, uh, no, a third, a It was quarter. over 200. Yeah. So not a whole lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the March election is the primary, so it will, uh, be, yes. it will be a big election. Uh, that ought to be fun. So okay. absentee ballots available a month before. You can order them up to three months in advance. I just make a comment too. It seemed like everything was running very smoothly when I stopped in to vote, and I really appreciate the fact that um, you know while I was standing there to put my thing in, is they go out of their way to make sure that everyone has access to vote, whether it's absentee or in person. I mean, Pat even had a little bell at her table so that if someone had difficulty coming in to vote, they would go off and she would run downstairs to make sure that person could get in and have a location to vote. And I just um, I really appreciate that, and I'm sure the town does as well. Thank you. And an that. update on the lift. So I got a one-day approval to run it yesterday, put someone on it, and it wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> so uh, we had a tech come out. He worked on it. He was there, I think, till after the polls closed. I don't even remember. But um, today there is a piece on the lift that is designed to break off if it's in jeopardy of failing, and that happened. So. so they've ordered the part. I don't think it will be ready for a farmer's market, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but I'll keep everyone updated on that. When it rains, it pours. Huh? Yeah, so unfortunately, we didn't get to test it yesterday. It sounds like you did test it and it didn't go <laughs> well. <laughs> Failed the test. I got the guy off, thank God. I was so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't halfway up when it failed. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Right. So, back to... Thank you, Patty. Yes, thank you, Patty. You, so you do a fantastic job. Yeah. Couldn't ask for better. Yeah. Go home and get some sleep later tonight. <laughs> I plan on it. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. No quick claim deeds, no abatements. Any second public comment? All right. So other business, non agenda items. Jeremy. I don't know that it's just. I can kick it, 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 it off. Jeremy Murray, right there. That's I can cut off. <laughs> James is behest. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Do I need to say my name and address? Yes, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. Jeremy, I'm on Blackberry Hill Road. Marie. Well, you were asked to come today just uh, with the planning boards looking to get the word out about ordinance amendments, and we have a joint meeting penciled in for the 30th, so just trying to brainstorm some ideas on getting, getting the word out and 
trying to solicit some ideas and yeah i think for getting the word out i i'd like everything on one page on the website just, i mean even just for now but but because i know it needs to input needs to be received by december 15th i believe for any i know <laughs> for any um request any requests for amending the luo i believe by the 15th um, so even if we just had it all consolidated to one page, like Irish's video under the land use ordinance, it's really hard to find the um, the flyer. It's under more news, and I honestly could not find it for the life of me today. I kept having to go to the link in the Berwick by monthly and then backtrack. So I think the if the link to the flyer and Irish's video went under, like with your video from three years ago, then people could have all the information about um, just how, how how the process works and the land use ordinance itself. Because I think, I mean, I certainly didn't know how much you could actually, you know, until I actually got involved, how much input you could have until we did the sign ordinance. And I was like, oh, wow. So I think just getting those things all in one place for people, and then I'll put it in the Berwick bi-monthly and could hang something up. I'll hang it with separate with the Berwick bi-monthly and all those locations. But Excellent. Yeah, so... Yeah, it was something I had asked because, and, and both of you, thank you for everything you guys do because you are, like, my spot of going for information is Jeremy Murray, and, and that's what I have. And especially with, I know, next week you have an Envision meeting, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow, because i got to remember my days, it's comp plan, you know, we're trying to do something at the end of the month, and I'm like, you know, what not a better way to leverage all the information that you get out to help solicit feedback back. Yes. Um, because, again, I mean... Envision Berwick Facebook page is like literally one of my go-to like informational <laughs> like awesome. what's going on in town. Even for me sitting up here is, is my easy outlet. And um, you both of you have that the touch points in a town to get information. And I think the more information we get, especially even prior to our joint meeting and, and whatever else, is, is going to be beneficial to us. With okay, what is what is important to the residents and what is important yeah. to the townspeople that we want to focus on going forward, so that we're not ever up against it where something's happening where, you know, we're trying to force something out that might not be quality or, or get something out in front of people that might not be done with our due diligence prior to, so. Right, right. And that LUO um, request for input did go out in this one, and the, kind of the cool thing about it going out in the MailChimp is, like, we, I can look, I haven't actually checked yet, but I can look back and see how many people actually click the link to read the flyer. Oh, excellent. So just to see how many people are actually engaging in that topic. Anything else from anybody? I mean, that was, just, you know, I mean, I, I just know, you know. In addition to talking about how we can get the word out about the planning board's interest in, in public input, we also talking about agenda items for our, for the, I, I think a really important item that I would like to see the planning board, the select board, and Envision Berwick consider is something that I've been talking to, to James about, I've been talking to Terry about, I've been talking to probably every department head, talking their ear off a little bit about it, which is messaging and our website and what we want the future, like the comp plan, thinking about how we want to think about a future. You know, and it's hard. Like the internet 30 years ago didn't exist, so it's hard to imagine what how we want our messaging and our information to exist going forward. But I think it's an important conversation to have. And I think we, we have all, I don't want to speak for, for anybody else, but I will say for, for me personally, I shouldn't say we all. For me personally, I find that I have frustration with Facebook, which seems to be the kind of town square <laughs> of the digital world, because you don't really have control over it. As, as somebody who's posting stuff, we don't know how they are feeding it to eyeballs. And as a consumer of that information, I don't know how it's deciding the percentage of ads to show me versus you know information about the town versus random cat videos. And <laughs> I would love to think that there is a future where we can take that control back. And it's something that, that I, I've done some research to see if there are other towns or other, like, who else is thinking like this? I'm not finding a ton, and um, 
I'd hate to think that Berwick could be on the very cutting edge of forward thinking in some really abstract way, because this is really abstract stuff. But I think it's important to think about, and then perhaps more solutions will come along as we're having these conversations. And we can say, aha, look, Kellogg's has started to handle talking to the public this way. And maybe that's, you know, Kellogg's is a bad example. But so it may not be a town. It may not be, you know, we don't know. But I just feel like the whole world is frustrated with the way Facebook has absorbed our attention and our lack of control over that. We do have a website. We do have a lot of folks who are providing information, like BCM and Terry, mm -hmm. and a lot of folks who are desirous of that information. But it is it is hard to have it so elusive. And I would love to find a way to think about a future where it is less. The reality is you're not going to be able to predict the future <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. You know, in 2000... 2006 or whatever, when they invented Facebook, nobody thought there would be... You couldn't even get on Facebook unless you were a in student college. at university. Yeah. You, you had to have a university email to get onto Facebook. Yes. So, the idea that now we have a, you know, a town Facebook page, which is unofficial, by the way, and, <laughs> and, and that's where most people tend to go for their information, uh, you know, on the town. They don't go to the website, you know, but in 10 years, it's probably not going to be Facebook because, you know, people are going to be aged out of it. It's probably not going to be TikTok or Instagram or either. You know, it's probably something that hasn't been invented. Yet. Or you have the Elon Musk uh, implant, yeah. Well, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It could be something completely different. We might not even have the Internet the way it is today. You know, it's impossible to predict. Um, you know, and I don't care for Facebook that much either. I basically go there to see what the, the older people in my family are doing because that's what people use Facebook for, you know. And so... It, I agree with your frustration. I don't. I don't particularly want people getting their information on Facebook either, because about a third of the time it's the wrong information on top of it. You know, it's people posting what they think is happening, and they don't have a clue. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I would love for our website, which is something that we can control, to be more central to how we disseminate information. More streamlined. The the problem is again, you know, you one you got to get people to go to the website, which is borderline impossible. You know, people want to go where they're already going to go, and two is somebody has to be on top of that, updating it regularly. You know, responding to questions, responding to comments, and you know, people do that for free. You know, and he's already got enough to do. He doesn't have time to to sit there on on the Berwick website answering every question that pops up. So it's it's tricky. You know, I agree with you though. In spirit, I would love to see that be more of a. Be, I would like our town center to be our town center. You know, to, to be the. I'd also love to see more people come to these meetings, and learn more about what's going on in the town. And I'd love to see people participate in the committees more. You know, I had a person two weeks ago come to my house to do like pictures for my daughter, and she was like, "Oh, you work for the town?" I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "What can I do?" It's like, go see Jeremy at Division Berwick, you know? <laughs> He'd love to have your help and do stuff. You can do that stuff there, and there's community garden, and there's the library. There are all these things that you can do if you're interested, you know? And to your point, everybody's input is welcome to the land use ordinance, to the town policies, to the personnel policy, everything. Come talk to us about it. Your input is desperately wanted. If you have something to tell us, let us know, because it's your town, not just our town. So, you know, I definitely would love to see that as well. As I would love well, to see everybody go to berwick.com, .com, you know, first thing every day, whatever. It, well, it, you know, that the whole, this whole conversation brings up something that we've talked about for quite a few years in the budget process is, is it time to hire a communications person for the town? You know, we've discussed it several times. You know, we have these disparate groups trying to get everything out there, you know, and we do need a central hub. You know, is BCM can't do that because they're too busy doing all the videos and posting and things like that. So it needs to be somebody else in a position that can do that. So that's something we're going to have to look at. You know. Today they call them social media managers, but wow. yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, a, somebody, you know, who's, who runs communications, who answers questions for everybody from the phone to the internet to the, 
to letters. I don't know who writes letters to towns, but they did. <laughs> no, yeah, you know, that would be something that would be, you know, could have benefit if the town wanted to approve that kind of expenditure. You know, it's all part of a conversation that I think is a really valuable one for us all to be having, and, and should definitely be on the agenda for yeah. this meeting. No, and, and, and I agree, and, and, and again, I appreciate James for asking you, and I appreciate both of you coming down, and, and I think that's really just kind of getting that ball starting to roll is, you know, there's many groups of volunteers that have spent hours, countless hours, both of you specifically, that I can think of that are trying to do the right thing for the town and trying to get the right information, and like Marie said, it's here, 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 and here, and, and how do we find that, and, you know, any way that we can leverage feedback back to us or to the planning board or to the comp plan, even though I keep trying to get people to volunteer over there because um, I know how infrequent I make my meetings. I will be there tomorrow finally um, on it. So, um, you know, it's difficult and I don't have the answer, but any way that we can get answers or anything that we can start thinking about it, I think it will just help streamline things in the future and, and, and help us position ourselves um, to to be better or have that vision and have that message be consistent across across the board, whatever that might look like. You know. Anything else? Thank you guys. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have any other business non-agenda items to bring up? Are I'll we just... sticking with the 30th? <laughs> or are we gonna try to look at the 29th? I thought we were going to count on the 29th. Yeah. Do you know if planning or envision could possibly do the 29th? Because Linda's got conflicts on the 30th. Yeah, the 30th is out. Oh, the 29th? I can look into it. The Just Wednesday, the 29th. 29th would be better. I can do either well. the 28th or the 29th. The 30th is the only one that's out. But you I, can't, she can't do the 28th. Yeah. All right, we'll, start, we'll try the 29th. So take a look we'll try at to that. Just split the middle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just want to see whatever we can get the most people out would be. Patty, great mm -hmm. job on the election as always. Just wanted to say it again. You can't say it enough. You do a great job. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> and you got to do it like three times a year. So keep up the good work. We'll support you any way we can. The truck or treat was great. I was there. Other people were there too. And, I, you know, people were there. The line went on forever. Cool. I'm glad I'm I got there earlier <laughs> than later. There were people in line into the darkness, apparently. Oh, there was. Yeah. So. That's great. I hope nobody ran out of candy. There was some sort they of riot. Did. Some people did. Some uh -huh. did, but the whole thing timed out pretty much right, right, right at where people needed to be. Yeah. So it seemed pretty well. It's um, one of those things you don't. You don't ever want to have a too little candy when you're doing something like that, and people are waiting for hours. Well, in, in this year, what I heard was there were people from some of the surrounding towns that had unfortunately canceled. Yeah. Um, with what was going on, and this was their outlet. You know, yeah, right? yeah. I, I, I heard there are people team. from Kittery and yes. Elliott yeah. and all around coming yeah. in. Driving in North Berwick. So, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's okay. going good, they, fun. They, well, they I, good fun. Actually, yeah. I had Must heard that they, post. somebody in Sanford told me that they wanted to do trunk or treat and they canceled it on them, so they couldn't go. <laughs> they were like some sort of supposed to do like a church trunk or treat and they couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. so, oh. um, and they're already working just on that. Just remind folks too again about the veterans. Yes. Veterans yeah. Memorial on Saturday, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Um, I always try to make it, and I always have something come up. But, you know, keep, but they, they, they're out there. They Rain or sky, yeah. usually doing it. Um, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Good night. Patty says you're going to extend the meeting for another hour. <laughs>